What up, you fluffy bastards? My name is Liquid Blitz, and today we're going to discuss how to maximize your scores in Battlefield 5 and get to the tippy top of the scoreboard. In a game with up to 64 players, you might think it's unlikely that you're ever going to get to the tippy tippy top, um, but, it, but it genuinely, seriously, isn't as hard as you might think. That's what she said. I ain't exaggerating. I come top of the scoreboard in something like half of all the games I play. I mean, just ask the people who watch me live on Twitch. Ooh, shameless self-promotion. No, but seriously, I am not the best player in the world. I'm, I'm all right. Top half, probably. So the question is, how do I come top of the scoreboard so much? Well, let's do this. Now, as per my usual style, all the main info is already on screen, just in case you don't want to listen to me or watch the whole video. Now, all of my regulars will know I love me some hardcore details, so I devised a list on the right of the screen uh, of all the main sources of points in Battlefield 5. Now, it doesn't include everything, only the main stuff. And I'm not going to go through each thing, you can just see it for yourself, but I will reference back to it. Okay, let's cut directly to the chase here. There is one obvious universal truth to getting high scores in Battlefield 5. In fact, any Battlefield. Play the f objective. PTFO for life. In fact, let's just sum up how to get high scores in like literally 10 seconds. Number one, constantly go for the objectives from start to finish. Number two, play in a full squad and play with that squad. And number three, utilize your class abilities as often as possible. Those three things will get you to the top of the scoreboard if you spend the whole game doing all three. Them's just the facts, but let's go into some more detail. Let's start with playing the objective. There's a reason people say PTFO. Yes, playing the objectives will help your team win, but, but purely from a selfish standpoint, it gets you so many more points to play the objective. Let's break it down. Right off the bat, you get 50 points per tick while capturing a base. The longer you spend capping, the more ticks you get. In Conquest, you get 100 points just for neutralizing a base, and in every game mode, you get 200 points for actually capturing one. So, already just basic capturing an objective, you're already looking at several hundred points. On top of that, if your squad leader sets an order on an objective, you get a shitload more points when you successfully capture it or defend it. You get 100 points for a successful squad attack order and 200 for a successful defend order, but I'm going to discuss squads a little bit more later. Now, as if all those delicious points aren't enough, we haven't even got to the juiciest part of playing the objectives yet. When you kill an enemy while you're attacking or defending an objective, you get monster bonuses. You get 100 extra points per kill while attacking and 150 extra per kill while defending. And that's just extra. That, is, that doesn't even, even include all the points you get from actually damaging and killing someone. As you can see on the right, for damaging an enemy, I've put one to one because every point of damage you do is a point for your score up to 100, and then you get 20 points for the actual kill itself, or 10 for an assist, 25 for a headshot, and since you get 100 or 150 extra for killing at an objective, in effect we can keep it simple and, and say that objective kills give you double points, more or less. That's why playing the objective is so important for high scores. Lots of juicy points for the objectives themselves, but then even more points for all the killing that goes on at these objectives. A few general tips for playing the objective. Flanking. Flanking is the, probably the best method for actually attacking a single objective. I mean, yeah, sure, it, it can be fun just being right there in the center, right in the middle of the crazy action on the front line, but if there, when there's too many enemies, it can often just be death after death after death, and quite frankly, if you're dead, you ain't earning points. So flanking always works well, and, and thinking more large scale with the flanking, on game modes with multiple objectives like, like conquest and domination, the outer objectives are usually usually lightly guarded or just straight up empty. Most people tend to fight towards the central bases, so flanking to the outer ones is a good way to get a load of free, easy points and help your team win. Now, speaking of being in the middle of the crazy action, uh, another tip, switch objective if the enemy defense is too strong. If there's too many enemies defending a base, there's no point wasting time trying to capture a base that you're never gonna capture. 
especially when your team just ain't helping, which, which happens a lot. Anyway, last tip about playing the objectives. Defending an objective gets you just as many points as attacking one. Since you get points for actually capturing a base, a lot of people think, well, you might as well just spend all of your time attacking enemy bases then. But remember, you get 150 points for a defense kill and only 100 for an offense kill. Those extra 50 points a kill are there to make the difference between capturing a base and defending one. So that's it for playing the objective, PTFO. Let's move on to squad tips. We've actually already discussed one big aspect of squads as part of playing the objective, attack and defend squad orders. Those get you 100 and 200 points respectively for every objective you tackle. That's a lot of free points. So whoever the squad leader is should always, 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 always have a squad order up to maximize your score, but only if the squad leader is, is competent and doesn't suck balls. I cannot stand useless squad leaders. In fact, I just can't stand not being the leader, period. If you want to get to the tippy top of the scoreboard, I strongly recommend that you lead the squad. This way you have complete control over which objectives you actually go after. When you are the leader, you should set realistic objectives that are actually likely to succeed. As we discussed, defending objectives is just as valid an option as capturing one. So a piece of advice is if you know you aren't going to capture a base within the next 60 seconds or something, set one of your bases on defend instead. Assuming the enemy don't then take it, that's a free 200 points. On top of any defense kills you get, I might add. Next squad tip, try and spawn on your squad mates as much as humanly possible. You get points for both spawning on your squad mate and your squad mate spawning on you, so win-win. And generally, it'll get you back in the action a bit quicker. The faster you get back in the action, the faster you can earn more points. It's all about spending as much time as humanly possible earning score. Anyway, the last relevant info about squads is a doozy. All team support actions get double points when used on your squad mates. So things like healing and resupplying and reviving, but also all those combat awards like, uh, like the Savior bonus and the Avenger bonus. They all get doubled when you do it with your squad mates. Anyway, that's it for squads. The point is you should never not be in a squad. And it's best if it's a full squad as well, just to really maximize the points. I mean, seriously, mo, mo people, mo points. Let's finish up this video with a discussion about class abilities, which is the third large source of points in this game. No matter what class you use, even recon, there are things you can do to maximize your score and get more points. First, let's get the obvious out the way. As medic and support, you should be healing and resupplying every single teammate you can. E every time that prompt appears on the screen, you should be a slamming that button. In fact, I it's become a habit. I do it so much now that I, I just look at every single teammate and hit that button whether they need it or not. I, I literally just wander the battlefield looking at people. Now, as a medic, reviving is where you get the huge ass points. It's 100 per revive or 200 for a squad mate, which is crazy. So you, sh you should revive as many people as humanly possible as long as their corpse isn't surrounded by enemies. I found personally that using smoke grenades and smoke rifle grenades is seriously helpful for reviving people. I recommend them for every single medic loadout. If your teammates even remotely exposed, just, just pop a smoke right down next to them. It, it almost always helps and works. Now, as for the assault class, all I can say really is that you should go out of your way to be taking down enemy vehicles. Nothing can ruin a party like an enemy tank. And as an assault, it's literally your responsibility to ease the pressure on your team and, and, and get them juicy points. Once again, I would say flanking is the key when it comes to taking out vehicles. And if you can, try and roughly aim for the treads or the engine just to slow it down. Anyway, lastly, we have Recon. Now, Recon is a bit of a mystery for some people. The secret to high scores, and I'm talking high, high, high scores with the Sniper class, is long-range headshots. As you can see on the list, there's something I haven't actually talked about yet. Marksmanship bonus. After 50 meters, headshot kills get a large bonus, and I'm talking on top of the standard headshot bonus. You get one point per meter above 50 meters. 
So let's say, for an example, you get a headshot kill at exactly 300 meters. That will give you a bonus of 300 points. Seriously, if you have a, a fantastic aim, it's surprisingly easy to climb the scoreboard as a sniper. Now, on top of headshots, another great source of points as a recon is you're going to want to spot as many enemies as humanly possible with the scope or the flare gun. You get tasty, sexy spot assist points every time an enemy is killed that you've spotted, especially vehicles. Anyway, I'm sure this video is long enough by now. This is actually one of my longer videos, so I'm going to leave it there. I hope you found this useful or interesting. Like this video if you liked it, like this video if you didn't like it, and subscribe if you want to see more similar content. And I live stream regularly, but only over on Twitch. There's a link in the description to my Twitch channel. Liquid Blitz, out. Thank <laughs> you.